Hello, friends. Welcome to our broadcast, Limitless Life. My name's Larry Hutton. I'm your host. Glad to have you with me today. As normal, if you're with me, you know you're going to hear good news. That's all I share is good news. And boy, in a dry and thirsty land of good news, yeah, we need some good news, don't we? Good news is God wants you healthy. God wants you wealthy. God wants you full of peace. God wants you full of joy. God wants you living a fun, happy fulfilled life every day and night. And it is possible. I'm telling you, it's possible. It doesn't mean that that all hell's not going to break loose because all hell is breaking loose around us every day all over the world. We can see that happening, but it doesn't matter because if you have all heaven breaking loose on the inside of you, then it doesn't matter what hell does because heaven will will defeat hell because heaven's already defeated hell and light will defeat darkness because light always defeats darkness and God always defeats the devil because he's already defeated him. So it doesn't matter what Satan tries. It doesn't matter what the kingdom of darkness tries against you, man. If you just let heaven break loose. I tell people, I've had people come up to me and say, man, pray for me, brother Larry. All hell broke loose. And I said, okay, let's let all heaven break loose. Let me teach you how to let all heaven break loose. Begin singing praises unto God like the apostle Paul and Silas at midnight when the things were just terrible and their, 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 their feet and their hands and they were just in prison and they were all chained up and, and it looked terrible for them. They're with the rats and the muck and mire of life and, and they start praising God and God sent angels and an earthquake and shook the prison foundation and all of their chains broke and fell off and they were free. Yeah, God will set you free, man. All heaven can break loose right in the midst of all hell breaking loose. So, so man, if you, if you got all hell breaking loose, it's not time to, to be depressed. It's not time to be discouraged. It's not time to get mad and it's not time to get all flustered and everything else. It's time to start praising God. Woo, glory to God. Another opportunity for me to believe God and watch God come through. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. All right. Let's get back to our series that we started three weeks ago. Today will end our third week and then we'll pick up week number four next week. But uh, we started a series on the subject of healing for your physical body. I titled it, It Is God's Will to Heal You. Not just it's God's will to heal this person. You may have heard about this miracle and that person and this person. Me. Maybe you heard Larry Hutton's testimony. Well, God healed me of that incurable disease. But God wants you to know it is his will, will to heal you. And you have to know that. I had to find that out. <clears throat> I actually believed God could do a healing or a miracle because God is God. He created the universe so he could. I just didn't know it was his will for me. But when I found out it was his will for me, that's when I got healed. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Not just heard. You may hear it's God's will. People hear it's God's will for them to be saved if they'll accept Jesus. But just because they hear it doesn't mean they accept Jesus as Savior. But once you hear it is God's will to heal you and you believe it, then you can act on that faith and put that faith into a, a wor working mode and you can receive every time. So it is God's will to heal you. So that's what we're talking about. We're going to go back to Romans, the 10th chapter, Romans chapter 10, where we've been looking each of these uh, last couple of weeks. Romans 10, 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I pointed out that word saved is the Greek word sozo. So it wasn't written, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It was written, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be sozoed. And then you look at the definitions of sozo, then they were hearing whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be preserved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be protected. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be made whole. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be healed physically. So they, when they heard this, they realized that their salvation, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, that their salvation included more than entrance into heaven, which is first and foremost, we get delivered from sin, redeemed from sin, saved from sin, and now 
Bless God, we are part of the kingdom of God. Our names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. And when we leave this earth, leave this physical body and get our new physical bodies and, and uh, glorified bodies, immortal bodies, man, I'm telling you, it's going to be wonderful. But right now, God wants his will in heaven to be done on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's why he used this word sozo is so that we could understand that salvation is a package. He, uh, Ephesians 2.8, by grace you're saved through faith. And that word saved is the same one we're looking at right here in verse 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord to be saved. That's the word sozo. So all of those different definitions are included in that package of salvation. But verse 14 says, but they can't call on Jesus if they don't believe in him, right? They can't call on him as a savior. They can't call him as a deliverer, as a protector, as a miracle worker to be made whole or as a healer to be healed physically. They can't call if they don't believe, verse 14 says, and they can't believe if they don't hear and they can't hear if a preacher doesn't preach it and a preacher can't preach it unless he's be sent. Like I tell my, my partners all the time, like I'm being sent over the airwaves and their money is paying for the airwaves and the production, my TV manager and the people I have to pay and the equipment that I have to buy, just all the stuff, the gospel's free, but to, to produce it and get it on the airwaves and sent out to the different networks so you can watch it, how can they do it unless they're sent? That's what my partners do. They send us. And those of you that make donation, your help sending the gospel around the world. So then verse 17 sums it all up when it says, so then faith by hearing, the word comes is italicized. It's not in the original uh, manuscripts. So it says faith by hearing, and that word by is a primary preposition. Uh, it, um, it's the point where motion proceeds. It's the point where action proceeds. I, I could say it this way. Uh, the point where faith is put into motion or the point where faith has action is when we are hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Or you could say it this way, faith is activated when you hear and hear and hear the word of God. So faith comes by hearing or, or faith is activated by hearing, hearing and hearing the word of God. Uh, verse 13, whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved, but you can't call if you don't believe, you can't believe if you don't hear and you can't hear if it's not preached. Then we took it backwards. Well, uh, verse 14 backwards, if a preacher doesn't preach it, you're not going to hear it. If you don't hear it, you're not going to believe it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to call. And if you don't call, you're not going to get. <laughs> so we, we found out by reading these verses backwards, it's actually the forward progression. Uh, these verses actually tell us what we have to do, the three things that we have to do in order to receive from God. We have to hear, number one. We have to, number two, believe. And then we have to, number, number three, we have to call. Hear, believe, call. That is the process of faith that releases God's grace. So if you hear saved, then you can get saved. If you hear delivered, you can get delivered. If you hear protected, you get protected. You hear preserved, you get preserved. You get you hear the word sozo means healed, you get healed. You hear the word sozo means be made whole, you can get a miracle. And so that's what we've been doing these last number of uh, days now in programs is we've been taking different of those definitions. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be sozoed. So we've been taking out different definitions and replacing this word saved to see what else God is saying is part of our package of salvation. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord as healer, for example, one of his names, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, notice, shall be whatever his name is delivers, right? So one of his names is Jehovah Rapha, Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord who heals you. That's one of his names. So if you call on the name of the Lord as healer, you shall be sozoed or healed. That's one of the definitions of sozo. And so we read it this way, and I'm going to read it real quick again, because there's probably people joining us that haven't joined us before, but there's also many of you that have joined us, and we need to hear and hear because your faith is activated by hearing and. Remember that word and is a continuative in the Greek. And, 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 and. In other words, you just keep hearing and it just activates your faith. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord as healer, verse 13, whoever calls in the name of the Lord as healer shall be what? Healed, right? 
Verse 14, how can they call on him as healer if they don't believe he's their healer? And how can they believe Jesus is the healer if they don't hear that Jesus is the healer? And first, the end of verse 14, and how can they hear Jesus is the healer without a preacher telling them that he's their healer? Then verse 17, so then faith is activated, faith for healing is activated by hearing and hearing the word of God on healing or health or about Jesus the healer. Now let's take it backwards. When we hear the word of God about Jesus the healer, faith for what is activated? Faith for healing is activated, right? When a preacher, verses, verse 14 backwards, when a preacher preaches about Jesus our healer, we what? We hear Jesus is our healer. Once we hear, but not until, but once we hear Jesus is our healer, we can what? Believe Jesus is our healer. Once we believe Jesus is our healer, we can what? Call. And whosoever calls on Jesus as healer shall absolutely be healed and made whole. Faith is activated for healing Faith uh, is activated for health when you hear and hear the word of God about Jesus, the healer, Jesus, the physical miracle worker. So last, last program, I ended comparing the church that I was raised in that had precious saints of God in it versus the church that I went over and got my healing of that incurable disease from, and they had precious saints in their church. But one of the churches... People were getting healed all the time. In the church I came out of, nobody was getting healed. And like I said, it made me mad at God for a short time until my pastor taught me this passage of Scripture we're looking at here. Whoever calls is the one that gets, which means if you don't call, you're not going to get. But whoever calls, but then it explains. It explains it. <coughs> Excuse me. It explains it in the next verse. Whoever, verse 13, whoever calls is the one that gets healed. But... How can they call if they don't believe? And how can they believe if they don't hear? And how can they hear if they don't, somebody doesn't preach it? So I realized the church I was raised in, not one preacher ever preached about Jesus the healer. Not one preacher ever said it's God's will to heal everybody. Not one preacher showed that Jesus, when he was on the earth, healed every single sick person that would believe him. And that Hebrews 13, 8 says he's the same today as he was when he was on the earth. Not one preacher said that of the church I was raised in. And guess what? We didn't have one healing. We didn't have one miracle, a physical miracle. It wasn't because God was picking the one church out saying, oh, you guys are better over here. I'll heal you. But now back over here, you're not good. No, God loved them both. He sent Jesus for both of them. And Jesus bore their sins and sicknesses for both churches. But the one heard it because somebody preached it. They heard it, and then they believed it, and then they called or acted upon it, and they got it. The others, nobody ever preached it, so they couldn't hear it. And since they didn't hear it, they couldn't believe it. And since they didn't believe it, they didn't call. And since they didn't call, they didn't get. Faith came for healing by hearing, or faith was activated to be healed when they heard. So according to these three verses, verses 13, 14, and then verse 17, there are three steps. Number one, verse 14 backwards, hear. Number two, believe. And number three, call. You know, we say three, we could say four steps. Somebody's got to preach it, number one, so that you can hear, can believe, and can call. But I'm talking about what you and I have to do in order to receive from God. We have to hear. Number two, we have to believe. And then number three, we have to call. So let's talk about those three things, but I want to talk about one at a time. Let's talk about in the order, since we found out that the reverse uh, backward, going backward through verse 14, backwards back up to verse 13 is actually the forward progression. Let's take the backward progression, the forward progression actually. Let's talk about hearing first, because you can't believe if, and you can't call if you don't hear, so you have to hear first. So what about hearing? Um, do you always hear, like the church you go to, for example, do you hear God wants you healed? An emphatic statement, not God wants you healed if you've been good enough. God wants you healed if you've read your Bible enough or prayed enough. Or God wants you healed if you've been walking in love. And God wants you healed of this, that. 
have, if, have you heard God wants you healed, period? He wants you healed. Because if you hear that, you know what will prosper? Your soul and your heart. Do you remember what 3 John 2 says? God, God said, it is my will above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He says, your healing and your financial freedom is connected directly to your heart and your head prospering. So if you start hearing good news, good news that makes you glad, glad tiding of good things it says here in this passage. If you're hearing that, it's going to prosper your head and your heart, and then guess what's going to ha happen? Your physical health is going to prosper, and your financial health is going to prosper. We haven't even gotten into that verse. I just quoted it. We'll probably get spend time over there, uh, some more programs. But my, my, my point is, we're talking about hearing. It is important what you hear. From the pulpit, definitely from the pulpit, right? I went to church all my life growing up. I was, I was born again. I went to a Methodist youth camp when I was uh, 13. And thank goodness that evangelist, that Methodist evangelist said, you got to receive Jesus to be saved. You can't just go to church. I thought just going to church or I thought, well, since my mom's saved, I'm, I'm good. Or I thought, well, if I live good enough, you know, my dad wasn't saved, but he was a good, good moral man. So I thought, well, we'll go to heaven, you know. But then when this evangelist said, no, there's no other name under heaven given among men, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we, we must be saved. You have to accept Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him not perish but have everlasting life. But you got to believe. So I believed at 13. But then from 13 to 22, I was still sick with an incurable disease. I never heard Jesus was the healer. So it's important what we hear from the pulpit. And not just from the pulpit. I wasn't just blaming the preachers there. It was also from other Christians. They would say it. Well, God's using sickness and disease to teach you, Brother Larry. God's using sickness and disease to humble you, Brother Larry. God's using sickness and disease for some spiritual deepening, you know, they called it to deepen your walk with him or, you know, to be whatever. <laughs> wow, I heard all that stuff and it kept me sick all those years. Then I got over to the other church and I heard Jesus is my healer. He's my personal healer, just like he's your personal healer. And he wants me healed. In fact, he so wants me healed that he already bore my sickness. So all I have to do is put my faith in what he already did and I'll be healed. Wow. And that's what I did. I got healed. So is, is what you hear important? Yeah, both, both ends of that spectrum. It was important uh, that I quit hearing that God uses sickness and disease to teach you and there's purposes and God allows sickness for some reason. It, I had to quit hearing that. So it's important what I heard. But then I started hearing. I needed to start hearing the truth out of God's word that makes you free. It's important what you hear from the pulpit and then from other Christians. And those, those other Christians might be friends. They might be family Or it could be TV. You may be hearing people talk on TV, just like you're watching me teach on TV. You may be hearing people because TV bar bar uh, bombards us uh, all the time with, you know, if you've got this this uh, symptom in your body, you need to take this, and you need to take this, and another program, you need to take this, and another commercial, you need to take this, and we just get bombarded with stuff. Take this, take this, take this, take this, and you know the sad part about it is a lot of people do it just because they heard it on TV. Wow. Take this, take this, take this, take this just because somebody said it and they didn't do any investigation themselves to see, well, what am, I, what am I taking? What's actually in that? You say it's good for me. And so people take it and then they have all these side effects, terrible side effects. And they, why didn't you tell me about that? Well, <laughs> you didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, but you're my doctor. You should have told me that my side effect is 
stroke and heart attack and this, that, and the other. Uh, sure, it did away with the symptom of what I was having the problem with, but it gave me worse symptoms. Yeah, yeah, so it's important. What you hear is important. Amen. Um, I actually had to change churches because of what I was hearing. I didn't, I didn't just try and do it. I was, I was kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. And a friend of mine that I'd gone to elementary school with, I ended up meeting him and he, I, I met him after going to a meeting and I saw him at a restaurant and he said, you need to come to our church because we have healing and miracles take place all the time. Well, in my church that I grew up in, we didn't have one single healing or miracle take place. So when he invited me, it just kind of like, what? Because I had an incurable disease. I need to be healed. And so I went over there. And for my first time in my life, I started hearing good news concerning physical healing. I started hearing it is God's will to heal you. Just like we titled this series, It Is God's Will to Heal You. I started hearing that. And you know what that did for me? The first thing it did is gave me hope. Because faith latches on to hope and then brings substance to it. Hebrews 11.1. 1. If you don't have any hope, you'll, your faith won't work. It won't produce anything. you got to hope. you got to have some kind of expectancy that faith will latch on to and say, Okay, let's make it, let's make it work. So I started hearing that it was God's will to heal me. And I got healed. Wow. So important what you hear. So I changed churches. I finally decided, you know what? I love those people. I love the preachers that were there. They don't know what these guys over here know. I'm not going to hold that against them. But I have got to take heed, like Jesus said, take heed what I hear. Be careful what you hear. Because what you hear is what you're going to believe, is what you're going to talk is what you're going to get. And that's what we're seeing right here in Romans 10. Call is the talking part. It's the confession part. Read the context, verses 9, 10, and down to verse 13. Whoever calls, that's the confession part. All right? So you're not going to call if you don't believe, and you're not going to believe if you don't hear, and you're not going to hear if you get somebody to bridge it. So what you do hear preached, what you hear, is what you're going to believe, is what you're going to talk, is what you're going to get. So I had to change churches. And I'm encouraging, I know I'm talking to some right now, you go to a church and they don't believe it's God's will to heal everybody, you need to change churches. You need to find a church. Contact our ministry. We'll help you. Contact Andrew Womack's ministry. Contact Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Contact Kenneth Hagen Ministries. Contact different ones that'll help you find a church that we consider a word church, a faith church, a grace church, whatever. Uh, you need to get in a church that preaches it's God's will to heal all so that you believe it and act upon it continually. And then you'll be healed or you'll walk in health. And when sickness comes against you, you'll be able to ward it off and stay strong. Hey, Fridays, today's Friday. Fridays, we always make partner days. If you're not a partner, uh, I tell my partners all the time, partners, you're so unselfish because you realize that the gospel itself is free, but the, 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 the products that are produced, whether it's the CDs, the books, whether it's the airtime that we have to purchase, whether it's our TV manager that we have to pay to produce it and then get, the, get these programs that you're watching sent out to the network so you can watch it, all of that takes money. And so I tell my partners, you're so unselfish because you're using money to preach a free gospel. And really, even though you say I'm the one preaching it, you guys, your money is proclaiming it. Your money is putting it on the airwaves. And so I always give people on Fridays a chance to become a partner or to increase your partnership if you want to, or to give a donation. You say, you know what? Uh, some, sometimes we have people do this. They say, you know, I'd rather just sow $1,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 right now instead of giving you monthly. I'd just rather do that once a year. That's fine as well. But I like people to have an opportunity because the gospel's free and we got to get it out to the world. So whatever it takes, we take this little thing called money and we become faithful with money. And remember, God said, if you can't be faithful in this little thing of unrighteous money, then how can I trust you with true riches? So we're faithful. 
And so Liz and I are partners with a number of ministries and we sow continually when we get fed the word of God. So we give our listeners the same opportunity. If you're a partner, you want to increase your partnership, you can do that. If you're not a partner, would you become a partner today? Call our toll-free number, 888-887-WORD, 888-887-WORD, and become a partner today. You can also go to our website, larryhutton.org, at larryhutton.org, and sow a donation there, or uh, give a donation, or give uh, sign up as partnership there as well. But if you call our toll-free number, just let them know, hey, I'd like to give a donation or I'd like to give, uh, I'd like to sign up, sign up as a monthly partner and they can help you even set up an auto debit from your debit card or auto from your credit, whatever you want to do. Or if you want to say, I'll send a check in, however you want to do it each month, they'll get all the information and sign you up to become a partner. And then you will receive a personal letter from me every month that I spend a lot of time writing. I, I just do a little teaching each month for my partners, just extra teaching that it's going to just help you in your walk with the Lord. And so if you want to become a partner, call 888-887-WORD. Become a partner today, and we would appreciate that. Thank you. Make sure you share these uh, uh, messages we're, uh, we're teaching here because it's going to help other people get healed and made whole as well. We're out of time. We'll pick up here this next week. We love you. Call you blessed. Until then, have a wonderful Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. With your own words, you can release the power of life that will bring health to your body. God's healing grace is released through faith, and faith is released through what you say. Your healing is in your mouth. God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. But if you have not heard his word on it, how can you have faith to call on him as your healer? These 52 declare-it cards have a healing scripture from God's word on one side and a corresponding declaration of faith, which you can speak about yourself on the other. Hearing God's word concerning your healing will build your faith to walk through life in complete confidence that every sickness or disease that ever attacks you must depart. To order your prescription for health declare it cards, go to larryhutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. Experience more of God's goodness by joining Larry Hutton again for more simple, practical teaching in God's Word. Go to larryhutton.org anytime to watch this broadcast and many others. You'll also find special offers and other resources to help you thrive in life. Or check on Larry and Liz's schedule so you can join them at a meeting near you. Go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673.